We didn't get that on camera. Don't worry. But we did get that. All right. Uh, just start with what's your name, where are you from, and why are you here today? Well, I'm Bob Jackson. I'm here to support the uh, California movement to secede from the union. I think it's something that's uh, inevitable, and I think the sooner they do it, the better. The country's in bad shape. It's not getting any better. This would help. Now, you have uh, quite a storied political history. This isn't like you just jumped up and said, this is the first thing you're going to get involved with. You're a former Libertarian Party presidential candidate yes. as well. I ran for president for the United States as a Libertarian in 08. Uh, before that, I ran as a Republican, as a can candidate for the Congress. And I also was very heavy in the uh, uh, Clinton administration with empowerment zones. I, uh, I had his embargoed State of the Union address nine hours before he gave it. <laughs> so I, I've been all the all the avenues over the last 60 years. That's been my hobby. All right, so back 60 years, no way. What? That's not possible. So you, you, I'm 80. No way. You know, you've been you've had 60 years of activism in. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I'm an I'm an entrepreneur, so I have my own business, so I don't report to anybody. So my hobby has been politics, and I've been very involved in politics for 60 years. I hope I make it that long. But yes, I've set myself up. I hope, uh, I hope it's not necessary. I hope, we, I, hope the, I hope the world doesn't need political activists. I've got 13 years under my belt. If I, if I, if I make it to six years of political activism, we better have solved this. Hey, dude, dude, I got, I got, you can run for office and get gray hair. So. It's going to take your hair. <laughs> I, it is, that is a, I am willing to make that sacrifice yep. if that's what it takes to achieve a world set free in our lifetime. But Bob, then going back, and, and I want to go all the way back to what woke you up, what informed you, what got you on this path of activism? Well, the biggest part was in the uh, early 70s. I was uh, doing business in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Turned out to be the most distressed city in the United States. So when Reagan got involved, he came with Enterprise Zones. I installed the Enterprise Zone in Benton Harbor turned it around and made it the most the fastest growing city. That got me national attention. So I've been in the White House several times. I've testified, Senate House. I've been all through Washington. And then, you know, I, that was nice because people work together. Uh, about 30 years ago, it started to change. And now, it doesn't matter what you do in Washington. It's so polarized. Nobody is working with anybody. It's broke. So, you know, with my platform, 50 state secession all at once, essentially, uh, the slogan that just found me naturally was localization is the cure for polarization. Get government to the community level, respect people's differences and how they want to organize. Is that something you see behind the CalExit movement, this, this critical mass of understanding that we're getting to in, in America, perhaps? Well, like everything else, I'm in the middle. Um, I see uh, California becoming a sovereign state. I see Texas being a sovereign state. Also, we're looking up here at the uh, north, uh, Northwest. Uh, they have a regional area. That could also be a separate uh, region. And then the rest of what's in the U.S., I would separate into red-leaning and blue-leaning, and I would stop there. Uh, so that would give you reasonably good-sized states of commonality in politics. Well, what if California breaks off and Orange County says, well, we want to break off from California. You would respect that, right? I respect them to say that. And then I would also say for California, show them that you have a functioning government. If you have a functioning government, which does not exist today, most people are very happy to live in a government that's functioning. So, yes, they may object to start, but show them that if it functions, it's good. It's a good mm -hmm. thing. So you're willing to accept that the balance of how local we get yeah. isn't going to be this libertarian, hardcore ideological vision, but it's going to be a balance of what works, where government can and should be yeah. customized. Well, and as Jefferson said, there's no such thing as quiet in politics. There will always be very significant arguments, but the arguments what? will change. What? I thought The arguments will change. Instead of being whether or not there will be a carbon tax, it'll be... Is the carbon tax proper? Should it be more or less? And the arguments would be centered in those directions, different from what they are now, and be around commonality of what's in California. And without the centralized corruption that we have in the federal government, you wouldn't have this theatrical, kabuki theater of fight club silliness between Democrats and well, Republicans, right? I think about the only thing that Trump has said we all agree with, it's a swamp. And a swamp is full of alligators, it's deep, and it's non-functioning, and nobody wants to go there that doesn't do anything. Uh, it's past its usefulness. Something has to be done, or what happens? Company, uh, country just dissolves or goes bankrupt or anarchy? 
I think we should get on board and come up with plausible alternatives before it collapses. Okay, so one last question, Bob. Tapping on your wisdom and experience here, 60 years in the... Tr yeah, see, this, I've, I've been around long enough. I feel that, too. There are days that I want to quit, and there are days when I feel like maybe it's not getting faster. Maybe it's not accelerating. Maybe we're not getting to this goal. But then every time I step back, I go, we're going to do this. Team, team people. We are overcoming this concept of modern, violent, centralized governments. Do you think that's accelerating or decelerating? How's it going? We're getting more and more violent all the time. Uh, anybody that's on the short end of any political argument becomes violent. Be they're getting violent because argument does no good. There is no discourse. There is no debate. There is no debate where people are willing to alter their positions. So the only thing left is, well, three of us beat the two of you, so you do what we want or we'll beat you up. So it gets getting violent. In a political sense. Overall, the world is actually getting less violent, statistically well, the speaking. The world, but I'm talking about the United States. Okay. And the United States is getting more and more violent. Well, that would suggest we're coming to a breaking point or a tipping point. No, you don't so, think so? I think you are. I think we are. So the, the big question is, can we hit it off? Can we come up with a better idea before it becomes anarchy? Well, I think everybody who's an activist should be striving for an answer to that question, making the world a better place through localization, through freedom, through respect for individual rights and each other. Hey, Bob, it's an honor to talk to you. Thank you. So, any, any way that you want to uh, let people connect with you or, or and closing live, thoughts? Live, yes. live and let live works. It just works. Here, here. Oh, I wrote a book on, uh, that has something to do with this. It's uh, the Jackson Amendment. It's on Amazon.com. Look it up. You'll see it there and would appreciate it. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks so much, brother. That was perfect. Thank you.